بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله تعالى محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم وعن أنس رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ثلاث من كن فيه وجد بهن حلاوة الإيمان أن يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما وأن يحب المرء لا يحبه إلا لله وأن يكره أن يعود في الكفر بعد, إذ بعد أن أنقذه الله منه كما يكره أن يقذف في النار This chapter is about loving the Muslims for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever we find as great Muslims, better Muslims, God-fearing people we should have more love for those people and our relationship with people, with Muslims, with every person should be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not any other reason. It should not be for any other reason. And of course, whenever we talk about love, the opposite of it, which is hatred, will always play the role also. So when we say our love should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our hatred should be also for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the beauty of our Islam, our deen. That Islam teaches us even how to control our emotions and our desires. And especially when it comes to emotions, there isn't any other religion in the world, any laws in any part of the whole world that will teach us how to control these emotions and how to use them properly. The only way, the only religion that teaches us about our emotions and how to control them and how to use them properly is Islam. And among the emotions that human beings have, the strongest emotions are of love and hatred. Sometimes people end up killing themselves because they cannot get the person who they love. And sometimes people end up killing other people because they hate those people. So love and hatred are of the highest emotions human beings have. And normally when they start playing the role in human beings life, one of the most difficult ones to control if the person doesn't know how to control them. Therefore, when we look in the history, we find people who have wasted all of their life just because they loved someone or because they hated someone. 
The whole life is getting wasted. Planning how to kill this person, how to hurt this person, planning different ways of how to somehow hurt the person that we don't like. They're wasting their time. And as I said, the emotion of love and hatred are of the highest emotions human beings have. Accordingly, they are very important because they are very high emotions. So if we use them right, we will get a lot of benefit out of it. But unfortunately, most of the people, they don't learn how to use these emotions and end up wasting these emotions. And not only these emotions, because these are very high emotions, so end up wasting their lives also because of not knowing how to control these emotions. A very simple example might be a person who has a boiler at his home, furnace, that boiler that gets very hot, extremely hot. This person doesn't know how to use this boiler. If he doesn't know how to use it properly, how to deal with this boiler, the boiler is extremely hot. There is fire in it. If the person will keep all of his papers, books around the boilers, they might end up catching a fire and burn the whole home. If the person will go and touch the boiler, he's going to burn himself. There is a lot of benefit of this boiler. And we know that especially in this part of the country where we are living, we can very well understand that you cannot live in a house where there is no heating. But when there is heating, you have to know how to treat that boiler. You can't go and sit on that boiler. It's not a sofa, it's a boiler. It's extremely important to have, but extremely important to know how to keep it. Same thing, our love and hatred. These are the hottest emotions we have in us. If we don't know how to use them properly, we will end up burning ourselves or burning something else. Hurting ourselves or hurting someone else. So these are very important emotions of the human beings and we all need to learn how to treat them how to control them, how to use them, and very importantly, where to use them according to the Sharia of Islam, and use them in such a way that they will be beneficial for us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with us by using them. Imam Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi, first thing he mentioned an ayah of Quran al kareem that says, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger of Allah. Walladheena ma'ah and the people who are with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentions two qualities of those people. One is ashidda'u ala al-kuffar. They are very strict against the disbelievers. Ruhama'u baynahum. They are very merciful to each other. Same two qualities, love and hatred. Same two emotions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is admiring Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een. He's admiring the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they were very great people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I love these two qualities in them. What are these two qualities? They are very merciful to each other, very strict against the enemies of Allah. Love and hatred, both are used in the right places and they are controlled. Their love is not used for the enemies of Allah.
That will be a wrong use for it. Their hatred, they do not use it on Muslims, on their fellow brothers. It will be a wrong use for it. They use their love at the right place with each other. They use their hatred at this right place against the enemies of Allah. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنَّ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ Whoever will have three qualities in him, he will be able to see the test of the iman. He will feel the sweetness of iman. Which simply means our faith, our iman, our salah, our ibadah, everything we do for our deen has some sweetness in it. Just like when we take some sugar, we say, oh, it's sweet. You put too much sugar in the tea, you say, it's too sweet. Honey, we say, it's very sweet. Same thing, our iman, our salah, our ibadah, recitation of Quran, all of these things have sweetness in them. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us not every person can feel the sweetness of it. If there is a sick person, go to the hospital, take a bottle of honey with you, go to the rooms of these six people, sick people who are sleeping in their beds, tell them this is honey, very sweet. He said, I don't want it. No, test it, it's very sweet. It's fresh, I just brought it. Okay, you give him a spoon of the honey, he says, oh, it's bitter. I don't know where did you get this honey from. It's too bitter. Why? The person is sick. When we get a fever, sometimes our test changes. You don't feel like eating anything. And whenever you eat something, you feel it's not testy. It doesn't have the test. It's bitter. It's sour. It's not good. Really, that thing is still sweet. The honey is still sweet. And anyone else will eat it will say it's sweet. But that person is saying it's bitter because that person is sick. Same thing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that you are sick and you cannot see the test of iman. You cannot feel the test of iman. You cannot feel the sweetness of iman. And if anyone of us does not feel the sweetness in our salah, we do not feel the sweetness of our Quran, because we are sick, our soul is sick, not the body. When the body gets sick, then the physical things, we don't like them like honey, sugar, these food, whatever food comes to us. And when our soul and spirit get sick, then we don't like our iman, we don't like the salah, we try to run away from salah. As Rasulullah sallallahu as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran about munafiqeen, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا they don't like praying, and even when they pray, they are very lazy to pray. They try to finish it quickly and run away from the prayer. Because there is disease in their heart. They are sick. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنَّ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ Whoever will have three qualities in him, then that person's soul will get healthy. And then he will feel, he will feel this sweetness of Iman. He will get the test of the Iman and he will test the sweetness of Iman. What are these two, three qualities? They must be very important. So this is why, listen carefully to these and see if we have them or not. Number one. أَن يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا that this person should love Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anything else in this world. Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should be dearer to us than our parents, than our children, than our relatives, than a husband, than wife, than children, for anything. Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should be the dearest people to us. Number two. وَأَن يُحِبَّ الْمَرْأَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And whenever we love someone, 
our love with that person should be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which simply means, when we dislike the other people, the rest of the people, we dislike them before the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, وَأَنْ يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أَنْقَذَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهِ كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ That this person dislike going back to kufr. Just like he hates getting burned in the fire. If we, any time someone will ask us that I'm going to burn your, your hand or put you in the fire or someone says I'm going to burn you while you're in the home, burn your house, on you while you're, you are asleep at your home. Who likes to get burned in the fire? Of course, no one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, disbelieving and kufr should be as disliked as we dislike getting burned in the fire. Just like, just the way we don't like getting burned in the fire, we should be running away from kufr and anything that leads to kufr and leads to Jahannam. So these are the three qualities. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever will have these three qualities, those people will have the test of Iman and will be able to feel the sweetness of Iman. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will announce, Aina al-mutahabbuna bi jalali? Where are those people who used to love each other for my sake? Al-yawma udhilluhum fi dhilli, yawma la dhilla illa dhilli. Today, I will provide them a shad, and today is the day that no one else can provide with any shad except me. And I will give those people a shad today when the sun will be only a fist away from people's head. Only a fist away, mate. It's so far away and we feel hot standing in the sun. The sun will be only a fist away from our heads. People will be sweating so badly that some people will have sweat up to, their, they will be sweating and sweating and sweating. Finally, they will sweat so much that their sweat will be coming up to their mouth. They will be standing in their sweat, up to their mouth. And that day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, those people who love each other for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, they will have the shed on that day, they will not have to stand under that sun on that day. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Those people who love each other for my sake, lahum manabiru min nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare members for them. Pulpit, member. Like the member, Imam stands on the member on the day of Jum'ah to give the khutbah. They will have a member on that day. Those members will be made out of nur, out of light. They will be so shining. And they will look so nice sitting on those members. That even Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam and shuhada looking at those people will feel so great that look how great these people are. In other hadith it says that people will be asking each other that who are these people? Are these prophets? And they will be told no, these are not prophets. These are the people who used to love their fellow Muslims for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. So loving each other and loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time the opposite of it, hating someone, disliking people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both of these are part of our iman and part of our faith. Without this, our iman cannot be complete. Without this, our iman and our faith will not be perfect. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, Man ahabba lillah, whoever will do four things, his iman will be complete. 
If we do not do these four things, our iman is not complete yet. Four things we have to do in order for our faith to be complete. Then we are complete Muslims. Otherwise, we are halfway. What are these four things? Man ahabba lillah. Whenever we like someone and we love someone, we like those people only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because we want to get something from those people. It's only because they are good people. They are virtuous people. They are God-fearing people. We love them because they obey Allah. We love them because they worship Allah. We love them because they follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, our love will be, should be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. Number two, wa abghadha lillah. And the person who will hate people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find people, they have some of those people who try to hurt Islam, they talk against Islam. And yet they keep friendship with those people. <coughs> because they work at the same place or they might be their neighbors or they might be their old friends. So they don't want to break the friendship with them. This simply means that these people's friendship is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If their friendship would have been for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will never have the friendship with those people who talk against Islam. If a person will curse at your father, you don't keep a friendship with him. The person curses at your mother, you don't keep a friendship with him. But the person curses at your God, at Allah, and at the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we keep friendship with those people. Then where is our iman? What type of iman we have then? And this we find it many places. We know that there are many different groups in Islam and especially there are groups who attack our Iman, who attack Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the main groups of those are Qadianis, for example. Those people who believe in a person who was in somewhere in India that he was a prophet. And they are called Ahmadis, they call themselves Ahmadis, they are Qadianis. We find people keeping friendship with those people, even though we know that all the Sahaba Ridwanullahi agreed that if anyone claims to be a prophet of Allah after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are supposed to have a war against that person. Musaylamatul Kadhab, when he claimed to be the Prophet, what did Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in do? As soon as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu became the Khalifa, and Musaylamatul Kadhab openly started inviting people that he, uh, towards, to believe in him as a Prophet, they had a war against him. And today we keep friendship with those people? Then where is our Iman and what type of Muslims are we? Who are we following? If all the Sahaba unanimously agreed on having a war against those people who believe in that person who claims to be a prophet. And today, those people come to our masjid, they come to our gatherings, we shake hands with them, we invite them to our homes. Just by doing that, simply we are proving we have no love for Iman. We don't care about our faith. Because when people curse at our parents, our mothers, our fathers, our wives, our husbands, we don't invite those people to our home. We say, no, we don't, we don't get along with these people. And people are cursing at the Prophet of Allah and they are blaming the Prophet of Allah and they are blaming in someone else after the Prophet of Allah. And we still keep the friendship with them because, oh, because these are our old friends and because our neighbors and we know them for a long time. This is exactly what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us. If our love 
and hatred is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we don't have faith, we don't have iman. Man ahabba lillahi wa abghada lillah. So I was mentioning four qualities before our iman will be complete. Number one, love for the sake of Allah. When we see good people, we love them because they are good people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ And when we hate people, we hate them only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنَعَ لِلَّهِ And when we refuse to give someone something, we refuse to give them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, one of these Qadianis comes to us and he says, Oh, we are building our place of worship. They may call it masjid, whatever. We are building that place. And you are one of my friends and neighbors, and I know you for so many years. Can you give me some donation? No, sorry. Mana alillah. Refuse to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person comes to you and he begs you some money, and you know that he wants to go and buy some liquor from the store. Mana alillah. You refuse to give him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And using a close example, our children, our brothers, our sisters, someone asks us, for some money and you know that these people want to go and rent a movie you refuse to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they want to do, go and do something haram with it we refuse to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whenever we give fourth quality wa a'ta lillah Whenever we give something, we give it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give in the masajid, give it to the poor people, give it to the needy people, give it to people who will use it for the sake of Islam. And we give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, with these four qualities, فَقَدْ اِسْتَكْمَلَ iman, Then our iman is complete and perfect. Without it, our iman is not complete. So the main qualities that we were talking about is love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hatred for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wife, Umm Habiba radiyallahu anha. She was the daughter of Abu Sufyan. And do you know who was Abu Sufyan? The leader of the Kuffar of Quraysh. But later on, of course, he became Muslim. But after Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, after both of these, one of them was killed and the other one died, then Abu Sufyan became the leader of the Kuffar of Quraysh. And of course, afterwards, he became Muslim. Anhu. But when he was not a Muslim, his daughter became Muslim and she was married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umm Habiba radiyallahu anha. And this is the miracle of Islam too. That the father is the leader of the enemies of Islam. And the daughter gets married to the prophet of Islam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She is married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he was not a Muslim and his daughter was married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa once he went to Medina to talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about something. So he thought, let me go and visit my daughter. So he went and knocked at her home. As he went in, she opened the door for him and he got in. She rushed to the bed, to the mattress, and she folded the mattress and put it away. She took the blanket, one mattress, whatever they used to have on the floor. She took it up, she folded it up and put it away quickly. So Abu Sufyan saw her running to the, that mattress and folding it and putting it away. So he asked her daughter, why did you do that for? Is it because... I'm the leader of the Quraysh. 
and I'm too great to sit on that mattress? Or you thought that this mattress is too great for me to sit on it? She said, Dad, I'm sorry to tell you, but this is a fact that you do not deserve to sit on this mattress because this is the mattress of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the purest person in the world, and you are a mushrik, you are unclean, you are unpure. I cannot allow you to sit on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mattress. Who is she saying this to? To her father. The father gets upset. He doesn't want to talk to her. He doesn't want to sit at the home. She says, that's up to you. You want to walk out? Go ahead. But I cannot let you sit on that mattress. You are unclean. You are impure. You are totally impure because of your shirk. And a mushrik cannot sit on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mattress. See the love for the sake of Allah? That how much he loves the Prophet of Allah? And at the same time, Hatred for the sake of Allah. Don't we think she also had feeling towards her father? For sure she did. Every human being has. She had those feelings for her father. That this is my dad after all. He came from a long journey. He traveled from Mecca to Medina in this hot, in this heat. And in those days traveling takes such a long time. And traveling from the deserts and not, not having enough food. First thing we will think, okay, even though he's kafir, but at least let us feed him properly, give him some rest, and then we will talk to him about Islam. But, وَأَبْغَضَلِلَّهِ Their hatred was for the sake of Allah. Even though the heart is saying, this is my dad, I should give him some rest, offer him some food. But, when it comes to showing that you are mushrik, and I won't allow you to sit on that mattress of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa She doesn't tell him to go away. But I won't allow you to sit on this mattress because I do not like you for the sake of Allah. And you cannot sit on the mattress of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is hatred for the sake of Allah. A beautiful example. And something that we all can learn a lot from it. <clears throat> that we cannot sacrifice our deen. For any person in the world. Might be parents, might be children. Might be husband, might be wife. We cannot sacrifice deen and we are not allowed to sacrifice our deen and our iman for any of these people in our life. There is no person more important than Allah and His Messenger wasallam. So our love should be for the sake of Allah. Also, you must have heard the name of Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul. Can you recall who he was? The leader of Munafiqeen. The leader of the hypocrites in Medina Munawwara. His son's name was also Abdullah. Again, a miracle of Islam. His son was perfect Muslim. And his, the father is the worst enemies, one of the worst enemies of Islam in Medina, the leader of Munafiqeen, the hypocrites. About whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ Munafiqeen will be in the lowest part, which means the worst part of the hellfire. Worse than the kuffar. Once, of course, because he used to show his iman, he used to show that I'm a Muslim, I'm a good believer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out on the battlefield and he went with their Muslim army too. And he had his followers, all of them, that was, they had their group of munafiqeen. When they were coming back to Medina Munawwara, he said to some of his people, once we will get back to Medina, la irrajana ila al Medina. Once we will get back to Medina, la yukhri janna al aazu minha al adal. What does it mean? The people who have respect, honorable people, will kick out the disrespected people out of Medina. He meant, I am the honorable person. I am a great person. 
I will kick out Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam out of Medina. He has no honor, no respect. We will should kick him. We should kick him out of Medina. This is what he said to his people. Someone informed Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that Ya Rasulullah, this is what he said. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called him and asked him, "Did you say that?" He says, "No." But he really had said it, and his son knew that he said it. And the ayahs of the Quran were also revealed. يقولون لا إرجعنا إن سورة المنافقون. Same thing. Surah about them. Hypocrites. Munafiq. Munafiqun. Hypocrites. So they say, Yaquluna. They say, La ir rajana ila al Medina. If we'll go back to Medina, La yukhri janna al aazu min al adal. The people of honor and respect will force out, will kick out the other people out of Medina. When they were entering Medina Munawwara, his son Abdullah, who was known to be the most respectful, respectful child to his father in Medina. He was very respectful to his father in Medina. So when they were entering Medina Munawwara, the son went and stood at the entrance, at the border of the gate of Medina with an open sword in his hand and all the Muslim armies entering and when his father was about to enter he opened the sword and said to his father you cannot get into Medina with an open sword in his hand and he's saying to his dad dad sorry you are not allowed to get into Medina why he says because of what you said he says what did I say didn't you say that people of respect should kick out the disrespected people out of Medina? I'm the follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he's the respected person. So this is why I'm kicking you out of Medina. You cannot enter Medina. So finally, he said, "I have to, son. That's my home. I have to gather. The only condition you can enter Medina is that you have to see and you have to announce in the public here." That you are the disrespected person and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the respected person. And he had to announce that before his son would allow him to enter Medina. Love for the sake of Allah, hatred for the sake of Allah. Who would do this? That he is giving all the respect and honor to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in comparing to his father. Why? For the sake of Allah. Even he has the same feelings for his father. He knows that this is my father. But why he's doing this to his father? Because he loves his father so much that he cannot help it. He cannot hear a word against the Rasul, against the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nowadays, our relatives keeps on talking against Islam. They keep on saying things against Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They keep on making fun of the Salah. They keep on making fun of Adhan. They keep on making fun of the scholars of Islam. And we laugh with them. That laugh will make us also lose our faith. That laugh will hurt our Iman also. That smile or even remaining quiet will hurt our faith in our Iman. So we have to learn these things. That our love should be for the sake of Allah and any person that we know that these are good people, God-fearing people, our love with those people should be there for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, قال الله تعالى that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hadith al-Qudusi, من عادى لي وليا فقد آذنته بالحرب Whoever will hurt the feeling of any of my friends in this world, any of those who are God-fearing people, virtuous people, whoever will hurt their feeling, فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Allah says that I announce a war against that person. Why? Because now we are hating a person, we are carrying a hatred against a person, who carries the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart.
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went to Makkah Mukarramah for making tawaf, this was in the sixth year of Hijrah, and the kuffar of Quraysh stopped Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from entering into Makkah. At that time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a treaty with the kuffar of Quraysh that was called Sulh al Hudaybiyyah or the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah. Before the treaty was made, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Usman radiallahu anhu to Makkah to talk to the leaders of Quraysh. Here I'm giving you an example of the love. Usman radiallahu anhu went to Makkah to talk to the leaders of Quraysh. So of course, when he, since he was in Makkah, the kuffar of Quraysh said to Usman radiallahu anhu, that since you are here in Makkah already, we will allow you to make the tawaf. Usman radiallahu anhu said, I'm not going to do the tawaf. How come? You people don't have the respect for the Kaaba. We are allowing you to do the tawaf. You are in Makkah. Why don't you do the tawaf? He said, because you people are not allowing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to perform the tawaf. And if he cannot do the tawaf, then I won't do the tawaf. I would do it only once he's allowed to do it. If he's not allowed to do it, then I don't want it. This was to make everyone understand that we love the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much that if you don't let him perform the tawaf of Kaabatullah, then we are not going to do it. Either we are with the Prophet of Allah. If you want to treat me different than the Prophet of Allah, I don't want to accept that special treatment from you. I don't want that special treatment. Treat me the way you treat the, Rasul, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because I'm in his group. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a sahabi who was wearing a golden ring. And you know wearing gold is haram for men in Islam. In the beginning of Islam it was not haram. So sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa jma'een in the beginning of Islam they had golden rings. But when it was forbidden, then they all took it off. This Sahabi didn't know till that time that it's forbidden. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw that golden ring in that Sahabi's hand. He was so upset. Because wearing gold to a man is just like having a flame of a hellfire on your neck or on your hand. It's just like having a flame of a fire on us. Because gold will lead the people to hellfire if these people, if we will wear it because this is disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, since when he sees it, he sees the reality of it and he sees that golden ring, but to him, as if he can see a flame of a fire on that person's hand, on this person's finger. So he got that person's hand, grabbed his hand, he pulled the finger, uh, the, the ring out and threw it away. How come you're wearing a golden ring? That Sahabi said, sorry, Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know that it was haram. Then when the gathering was over, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left and he went home. Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa jama'in said to that person, that Sahabi, go ahead and pick up your ring and go and sell it now or give it to your wife. Women are allowed to wear it. You can go ahead and sell it. So take your ring and go ahead and sell it or do something else with it. So he says, I'm not going to touch this ring anymore. Why? He says, if this ring, because of this ring, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upset with me, I don't want to even see it. And I'm not going to touch something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has thrown away. See the love? We see it as a gold. Now that Sahabi sees it even worse than a garbage. He doesn't want to even touch it. He doesn't want to see it. In fact, he hates that ring now because because of this, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upset with me. 
no value of gold and silver. After the battle of Badr, During the battle of Badr, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, of course, was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and his son, Abdul Rahman, was not a Muslim yet. So he was with the Kuffar of Quraysh during the battle of Badr. After he became Muslim, once they were sitting and discussing the battle of Badr in Medina Munawwara, so Abdul Rahman radiallahu anhu said to his father that during the battle of Badr, you were just under my sword. You were just under my sword. I was about to move in and you would be killed, but I decided to just let you go because you are my father. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu right away said to him, but Abdul Rahman, if you would have been under my sword, I would have killed you. I would have killed you if you would have been under my sword. Why? Because... I was there for the sake of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was there with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I cannot cheat Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You were the enemy of Allah at that time. You were the enemy of Rasulullah at that time. You were fighting against the Prophet of Allah at that time. So I would have killed you at that time. This really shows how much these people loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much love they had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a sahabi. And we really, we can keep on going on and on with these stories of sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'een. And their love for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me just narrate one more and we should inshallah end it there. We have a lot of hadith to talk about too. There was a sahabi. Who built a home? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was going somewhere and he saw that house. He asked the Sahaba. He said, "This is a new home here, new construction. It was a big, huge house." He looked at that house. He said, "Okay." He asked, "Whose house is this?" Ya Rasulullah, is that Sahabi's home? That Sahabi later on went to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He wasn't around then. Later on he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Assalamu alayka Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned his face away and did not reply to his salam. He thought the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may not have seen me. So he went from the other side and said, Salam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned his face to the other side. So he realized that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is upset with me. He asked the other sahaba, that it looks like the Prophet ﷺ is upset with me. What do you think is the reason? They said, we don't know. We don't know what's the reason except few days back when he was going by your home, he asked whose house is this? And we told him that it was your home. So he said, do you think that that might be a reason? They said, we don't know, but it might be. We are not sure, but that might be a reason. Okay. He didn't say nothing, he just left. You know what was the next step? He went and demolished the whole new home. After demolishing the home, he did not even say, mention it to anyone. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he was passing that, that place again, he didn't see the house there. He asked the Sahaba, what happened to that home? There was a new home over here. Ya Rasulullah, because when he came and said salam to you, you did not reply to his salam, so he thought you are upset with him because he built this big home. So he came and he demolished his home. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he was pleased with that sahabi. Of course we know that building new home, building large home is not haram in Islam. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not like it for his companions, for the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa to have all of this comfort of this life in this world because he wanted to save all of this comfort for them for akhirah. This was the reason that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not like his wives, even though it's a lot for Muslim women to wear the gold and silver, he did not like his wives to wear anything made out of gold. 
Sometime when he saw Aisha radiallahu anha wearing some uh, gold and jewelry, he asked her to give it out as a sadaqah. Because he wanted them to get all of this in the akhirah, and he wanted them to be the highest model for the rest of the ummah till the day of judgment. So Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, they loved Allah, and their love was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their hatred was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with such a great iman. Mu'az radiyallahu anhu says, Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, Inni la uhibbuka ya Mu'az. Mu'az, I love you. Who said that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying to one of his sahaba, Inni la uhibbuka ya Mu'az. Mu'az, I love you. What a great person that might be. How lucky that person is. He's getting the greatest certificate in the world. That the Prophet of Allah says to him, I love you. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Mu'az, since I have said this to you now, as a sign of my love, keep on doing one thing throughout your life. After every salah, say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatik. Ya Allah, always help me to do your dhikr and to thank you and to perfectly perform your ibadah, to perfectly worship you. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatika. A very special dua told by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at that very special occasion. Who knows by reciting this dua, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment will love us also and we will be with him too. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us at the end, let me just mention one rule about this, about this love. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us a rule about this love for the sake of Allah. He says, when you love someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let the person know that because you are doing good work for Islam, you are a good Muslim, I love you for the sake of Allah. Inform that person, there is nothing wrong in informing the person. In fact, it's good so that that person will also know that you have that great respect for him and great love for him. So that person will also have love for you. Once a person was sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, another person went by. Rasulullah, he, this person who was sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, inni la uhibbu hadha. I love this person. He's a very nice man. You know, sometimes we see that I love this man, he's a very nice person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, A'alam, Did you inform him that you like him? He said, no ya Rasulullah. He said, A'alimhu, go and tell him. Let him know that you like him for the sake of Allah. So he went and told him. So that person replied, Ahabbaka alladhi ahbabtani lahu. May Allah love you for whom you love me. So this is also a sunnah to reply this because Sunnah means Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa of course knew about the reply and he did not say anything about it that simply means it approved. He did not disapprove it. So if someone, if we love someone, we like someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for any other reason, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should inform that person that I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reply if someone would tell us that, the reply is أَحَبَّكَ الَّذِي أَحْبَبْتَنِي لَهُ May Allah love you for whom you love me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the understanding of our deen and make our love and hatred only for his sake. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا وَالْحَمْدُ